Hi everyone and welcome to part two of our Tamiya Toyota Bruiser build. And we're going to finish up this bad boy in this episode. Yeah, I know it's already done. Well, I don't think the viewers care if they see the end product. No, it's all about the process of how I got here. Got some really cool time lapse video. Oh, can I continue please? Thanks. Sorry for being rudely interrupted like that. Yes, the bruiser is done, which you see here. But like I said, it's all about the process of how I got here through time-lapse video, which I thought was pretty cool. Especially building the whole gearbox and transmission, which I personally feel is the hardest part of this entire build. But uh, like I said, this is part two. So if you haven't had an opportunity to check out part one, I'm just gonna ask you to pause the video, go down to the description, click the link for part one, watch that. It's not very long, it's about 12 or 13 minutes. And then come back to this, because you can't watch part two if you didn't see part one, right? All right, so with that, enjoy the video. I'm gonna be popping in throughout certain moments just to comment, and then I'll see you all at the end of the video just to reflect on the build, test this thing out, and uh, talk to you a little bit about what my plans are for the body. All right, enjoy. We are now at the critical stage of the build, and that's testing the transmission to see if it even works. Fingers crossed. Just finished getting the mechanism box mounted in. At least that's what the manual calls it. I call it the electrical box because it contains the ESC servos and receivers. And I got to bundle up all these wires, and before I even get them tucked away nice and neatly in here, I just want to make sure the darn thing works and that we're able to shift into the three different gears. Uh, the low, the medium, and the high, and the low being the four-wheel drive. So, fingers crossed, I'm going to uh, get a battery connected to this, uh, turn on the receiver and the transmitter, and uh, hopefully it works. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. All right, I'm going to switch camera angles to get a close-up, and uh, hopefully we have no issues. All right, so first off, I have this Futaba four-channel radio, and I don't know. 
There's a little bit of a backstory to this, which I'll talk more about towards the end of the video. But when I bought it, I thought it was white or silver. And when I took it out of the box, it's actually gold. And right now on the camera, it looks like it's silver. But when the light hits it, it's, at, it's gold. I don't know. My wife always says I'm colorblind, but it's gold. All right, anyways, let's turn this on. I'm gonna put this off to the side. And I'm gonna move this a little closer to us so we can see. All right. Oh, well, that's the steering. <laughs> oh, that moves that. Uh... Oh, here we go. Oh, wait. Okay, that's... All right, that must be the, the uh, two-wheel drive high. All right, let's go in there and see this. All right. Okay, but I want to see this move now, so hold on a second. I need to play around with these remote. Hold on, hold on. Let's go. So now as you're driving in a high, you could shift into... Oh, it's moving. Oh! Look at that. All four wheels are spinning. It's amazing. It's magical. I did it. I really did it. <laughs> All right. Great. All right, what happens if I now go the other? All right, so that stopped. Now it's the rear, and now... Oh, it goes even faster there. Look at that. All right, so that must be the high gear, or the fast gear. Getting faster. All right, well now I'm gonna go bundle up these wires that you see moving the camera right over here. Get them all nice and neatly tucked away. Finish up the build, throw on the tires. Give it another run, just like you see here, but with the tires on it. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the build. All right, well, I know I tested this out already, but I got the wheels and tires mounted on, and I wanna now test it again with the wheels and tires so I can get the full effect. So let's plug in the battery, turn on the transmitter, and turn the truck on. Okay. Steering still works. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, that is the mid-range two-wheel drive. And we're gonna switch it into the high now. And that's high. I'm gonna just bring it down a little bit. Back into mid. And now we're going to switch it into four-wheel drive. There you go. Look at that. Now we're going to put it back into mid. And wheels and tires aren't spinning anymore. All right. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's shut this off. Okay, here we go. Uh, unplug. All right, and shut this off. Okay. Super happy. <laughs> so glad this thing works. <laughs> All right. So I'm glad it works because I have to say it was kind of challenging. I mean, it wasn't as hard as I was anticipating, but definitely challenging. And I've never built anything like this before. So for it to be working, that's a relief. I guess I don't give myself enough credit, right? But the hardest part, I have to say, of this entire build was definitely the gearbox and the transmission. Uh, specifically, um, I have it written down over here, the shift fork, and I'll throw a picture of that um, up here in the corner. But the shift fork has these two little balls that help guide the fork as you're shifting gears. And as I was putting it into the gearbox, or the gear casing, uh, the balls kept coming out. I couldn't figure out how to keep the balls in. <laughs> so, um, of course, when I finally got it in there and I put the gearbox together, um, you're supposed to hold the shift rod, which is what the servo is attached to, uh, to shift the gears. 
and I accidentally uh, pushed the shift rod all the way in. Now you're supposed to hold it in in place with these two spacers. I guess you're not supposed to play around with it until it's like fully mounted in the truck. And I, I accidentally pushed it in and it got like stuck in there and it wouldn't come out. <laughs> and I freaked out. So luckily that was before I actually uh, mounted it uh, to the chassis. So I ended up taking the whole gearbox apart <laughs> and rebuilding it a second time. Because <laughs> I freaked out. So I'm like, oh my God, it's not gonna work. So rather than risk putting it in and having it not work, I wanted to make sure it was definitely gonna work and that I was gonna follow the directions to a T and avoid any kind of catastrophe later on. So yes, I, I rebuilt the gearbox twice. <laughs> so I guess I'm an expert now, right? <laughs> so um, that was definitely the most challenging part. And then as far as the uh, transmitter, well, I was gonna go with a radio link, but then I was talking to some people online and they said it was a little bit of a pain uh, to program um, the, the points where the servo shift and uh, you know uh, put it into two wheel drive, low, high, and then four wheel drive. So I, you know, a couple of people online recommended this. It's very easy. It was basically plug and play and it was only $99 on uh, Futaba's website and it got here <laughs> in about like two to four shipping days. So I was very happy about that. Um, I was a little um, taken back when I opened it up because it was gold and I know I mentioned that earlier on in the video. <laughs> online, it looks like it's white or silver. When I opened it up, I was like, wow, it's gold. So I don't know, maybe I am colorblind like my wife was saying, but worked perfectly, plug and play. The only thing I had to do was reverse the servos, which is so easy. All you have to do is flip the switch down here and it just makes your life so much easier. So plus if I ever decide to fly an airplane one day and get a model airplane, I can just take the receiver out of here and I'm good to go with this thing. So, all right. Um, as far as the body, well, um, it's the middle of the winter right now and it isn't the most favorable conditions to paint a body outside. So I'm going to have to hold off on that and do it in the spring. So hopefully as soon as the spring rolls around and I get one of those beautiful 60 degree days, I can get outside and I am going to paint it that box art blue. The number of the spray escapes me right now, but I will spray the body. I will clear coat it. And as far as the trim work on there, which I have to say is very tedious, uh, my buddy Harry said he would help me out and do that. He is an artist and I have to say he's a really good painter. And uh, he helped me out with my monster beetle, which I have yet to put out a video on that. But um, he is gonna help me out and that's a tremendous relief right there because <laughs> I do not have steady hands like that to do the trim work. So thank you, Harry. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. Wasn't as complicated and as hard as I thought. Definitely challenging, very rewarding. I enjoyed the build. And uh, now I'm just gonna play around with it and just get some footage of it. Not very extensive footage. I'm just gonna run it around in my house a little bit. So uh, I'm gonna cut to that. And as far as uh, you know, getting some elaborate, nice running footage, well, of course, in the spring, once I get the body all painted up, I'll do something where it's on the trail in the woods or on the beach somewhere and get some nice action footage of it. But until then, uh, I'm just gonna leave you with a little uh, footage from around the house. So uh, enjoy and uh, thank you for checking out my video and I will see you in my next video, all right? <laughs> Take care now.